welcome to lecture 10. Um, so, we will continue with some uh, more algorithms of a different <coughs> variety and this is to demonstrate that you know what I said earlier that uh, there is a kind of a close linkage between sorting algorithms and convex cell algorithms. So, what we did last time was to kind of um, uh, you know show you that there is some kind of a, um, a counterpart to quick sort in the, in the case of uh, convex cells. Uh, but the, the more standard algorithms for sorting you know uh, like um, merge sort or maybe um, what do you call this selection sort etcetera uh, um, uh, insertion sort. So, uh, I will I'll show you that there are some counterparts to that also if you are interested in those kind of algorithmic paradigms. They are not going to give us anything better than what we have seen so far because I said that we have achieved what is uh, optimal namely you know big O of n log h where h is the output size and n is the input size. So, we are not going to get anything uh, better, uh, but then you will know, just see that you know some of the standard algorithmic paradigms that we use for sorting also carry over to convex cells. Right? So, for that let us look first at uh, the, the merge merge sort algorithm what would be let us say the counterpart of the merge sort algorithm. So, what do you do in the merge sort? So, let me write uh, merge hull ok. So, like your merge sort you partition the given set of n points into two halves almost equal say right. and then recursively construct the convex hull of each half And of course, in the last step, you must somehow combine or merge C H of S 1 and C H of S 2 into the overall convex R. Now, when I say S 1 and S 2, I do not I mean I could imply that S 1 and S 2 are actually linearly separable in the sense that I can take the left half of points and the right half of points that would be one way of dividing into two halves, but uh, it is they are not necessarily so. However, if they are so suppose S 1 and S 2 are actually linearly separable. a set of points ok I could have another set of points the green points right? and they are what I am saying they are separated uh, separable. So, there are about n over 2 points here and about n over 2 points here and we construct the convex hull recursively. then we somehow need to combine them into one single uh, convex hull. So, how would you do it you know if it is like this how would you approach this. Highest and lowest I mean what are you going to do with the highest so highest point in each half somehow what are you going to do with the highest point in each half and this one and you are saying that you are going to join them 
like this and why should this be a part of the convex hull? Okay, let me just make life a little bit more difficult. Um, wait, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, you've, you've hit upon the right thing. So, suppose my hull was something like this. Okay. And if I then try to join topmost points, you see that it could actually, I mean that may not be an edge of the final convex hull, right. You want an even, okay, so I, I can make it worse. I could have a hull like this, right? This could be my la right. So it's certainly this this uh, the top the red dot joining the top two points, you know, may not be an hull of the convex hull, uh, the final convex hull. It may not be an edge of the final convex hull. So you know, it it cannot be that. It's not that straightforward. But somehow we should be able to combine them. If you look at these two figures closely, you know. Uh, someone did bring up this notion of tangent. So, we, we should think about you know we, we if you are going to sort of um, so the, the, the word that is used here is often uh, is called this you know wrapping it up you know sort of. So, if I want to wrap them up into wrap them up into one convex hull. So, like you know take a rope and, and sort of wrap it around the certain portion of the convex the two convex hulls you know they are going to disappear. So, you know this uh, roughly speaking the two things facing other each other should disappear okay and uh, something like you know um, this should happen so you know there is a part namely you know this part and this part okay that's going to be part of the final convex hull then there are these two inside parts with the red uh, where i have shaded those are the ones that are going become will become internal points okay and then we have these two things you know which we can call upper and lower tangent right this is the overall structure so to find these uh, the find the merge of these two hulls okay we need to actually find the upper tangent and the lower tangent. So, imagine you know these these two these two convex hulls they are kind of shining objects ok. So, wherever the light shines ok that part gets hidden and wherever the light does not shine on the from the other hull you know it is it is going to be part of the final convex hull that is the intuition. Right? But overall you can see whatever be the uh, shape or size of the convex hulls if they are linearly separable you know. So, I have one hull like this and another hull like this or whatever some oddball shape. So, we are always going to basically you know try to find this upper tangent and lower tangent and that is how it is going to get merged. So, how would you find the upper tangent and the lower tangent? Are, are you convinced that you know there are only going to be upper and lower tangents and nothing else? The only additional structure that we are adding are these two edges, the upper and the upper tangent and the lower tangent. There are no like there, there, I'm not adding any more edges to the convex hull, and of course because of that many edges of the uh, the 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 left hull and the right hull they are going to disappear. Why not? Because uh, maybe the upper tangent which we are adding, it is making sort of some obtuse angle, which the line just adjusts, the light segment just adjusts. 
No, no. So, what I am computing here with the upper and lower tangent, this is my last stage of the recursion. So, there is no question of any doing any any anything, anything else. So, what you are saying is true if we are looking into the recursion. So, you know, at the second level or third level, whatever you compute, that may not be the part of the final hull. But this is the overall recursive structure that I have a left hull, I have a right hull, and the overall hull of the, of the there is a combination of the left and the right hull. Then we compute these two tangents, and that's about it. You know, how can these not be part of the final hull? No, 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 no. That's that's the counter example I gave. So it cannot, it may or may not be the topmost uh, point. Okay. We have to compute them. The topmost point I I gave in the previous example itself. The topmost point. Look at the red dots. These red dots, okay, intersects this thing. So it cannot be a part of the uh, this edge cannot be a part of the. So that is not the tangent. Essentially, what we are saying is that this is not the tangent. Let's say A B is not a tangent simply not a tangent because there are vertices of the right hull that are above the tangent uh, above this line so it cannot be the tangent the tangent by definition must connect two points okay and the remaining point should be strictly below that okay. so in the second figure my upper tangent is a tangent because it connects two points uh, the input set okay and the remaining points are below it Uh, no, I didn't get that part. So one point from one tangent will not. No, no. So I don't know which point the tangent. The, I don't know the. So what we don't know are the points of support. I don't know the points of support. All I'm saying is that the final structure. I I have to find out somehow this L and R, the two. So the L and R may not. I don't know which is what points these are. These may or may not be the topmost point of the two hulls. Absolutely not. That that's a counter example given in the previous example. All I'm saying is that as long so so that that the over the final structure will be such that there is a tangent. There's an upper tangent and there's a lower tangent, and we have to find the tangent. Getting this L and R should be boundary points of the. The L and R has to be some boundary point of the of the so, hulls. Uh, can't there be a case that uh, uh, we cannot have a tangent? How can you not have a tangent? So first of all, let's let's convince ourselves that whenever there is a uh, whenever there is a convex hull or uh, a convex polygon, whatever you call it, okay, and I give you any point outside of the of the convex polygon, you should be able to draw a tangent from this point. Right. So, what? Where is the question of not being able to draw a tangent? Sir, but this point should also be okay. So, I can always draw a tangent from a given point to a to a hull. In fact, we can draw these two tangents. To be precise, okay. We can draw exactly two tangents. Okay. So, maybe one should think about this problem first because here we have. It seems like slightly more complicated because we have a left hull and the right hull, and we are trying to draw a tangent. And we do not know the point of support on either the left or the right. Okay, when I define a point P like this, you know I am drawing a tangent from that point P to the hull, and these are not known to me, which I am going, to, which we are supposed to find out. You know, so let us say some y1 and y2. These points I do not know, which I have to find out. So how would you find? Suppose let let's focus only on this problem. That given a point, and uh, given a point, I am trying to draw a tangent to a given convex polygon. So how would you find the tangent there? Let's not talk about angles. Angles are difficult to compute. Compute so somehow so algorithmically. <laughs> right. I mean, by definition, I mean, if you if you if you, you can do a kind of a brute force method where you s you can say that okay, uh, you know, uh, any point that is a tangent, okay. Has the following property that you know this is what kind of a turn? Okay, so if I'm trying to find the upper tangent, okay, and what is this turn? Right, right, right. So there is some. So uh, with a better example, bigger example. So let's try this one. Okay. 
and I have a point P here. Okay. I can so there is so here is uh, a left turn. Okay. This is a right turn. This is also a right turn. Okay. But at some point, you know, it switches from a left turn to a right turn. Okay. And where it switches from a left turn to right turn is this point. So that is the upper tangent. And likewise, you can look at the lower tangent. Okay. So we should be able to somehow find that quickly. Why can we find that quickly? How quickly can you find it? Are you convinced that we should be able to find it in? So it's like this, you know. We have, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, left turn. Sorry, right, uh, left turn, left turn, left turn, left turn, left turn. Then suddenly, right turn, right turn, right turn. Okay, and I'm saying the first point that we have a right turn. That is the point that we are looking for. So in a sequence like this, can you do binary search? Or whatever you call, you know, call the bisection method, right? We have to find, you know, this this switchover point essentially. We have a long sequence. We have to find a switchover point, and you, then you should be basically you should be able to argue that we can do binary search. Right? So why and how can we do binary search? Because the convex hull itself has some ordering. Right? So we have to store these in some kind of order, and then only we can do the binary search. So this is again implementation details, you know. Will, so, for this particular kind of binary search, we have to. No, no, the, no, no, the point is uh, why do we need to do binary search and not what? No, how much time will you spend for that? Yeah, but I'm, I'm asking, I asked the question how quickly can you do it? You can do it in linear time. You can do. It. See, we are looking at only this point of finding a finding the uh, tangent from a given point to a convex polygon. You know, linear time. Obviously, I can do it. But the listing those No, why should I list those sequences? That's my point. I have this is implicitly given to me, right? I have the sequence, which means that I have the coordinates. I don't know whether it's left or right, but I know that. It's just one level above, you know. It's just one level above the normal binary search they do. I do. I'm not doing it on values. Okay. I have the coordinates. Okay. So actually, what I have are coordinates. Okay. I have some x1, y1, x1, y1, x2, y2, etc. Okay. Uh, but then, uh, corresponding to each of these points, the the p, uh, sorry, the the two points, the two consecutive points. You know, I take p. Uh, let us say uh, a1 a2 okay which is basically a1 a2 i can figure out whether it's a left turn at a1 or right turn at a1 right so i don't need to compute the value that's given to me that's that's so implicitly i have this sequence and whenever i have to actually compute whether it's left or right i look at the values and compute so i compute on demand right so it's binary search with just that one level above that you don't have the explicit values but that this is good enough you know let us do the binary search okay uh, so this is about a tangent from a point uh, to a convex polygon. Our actual problem is somewhat more complex than this. That is, we have the we have two convex polygons. And these are not arbitrary convex polygons, these are two linearly separable convex polygons. That's why we can talk about this upper and lower tangent. Right. So this I will leave as an exercise. How are you going to find, you know, whatever is the required tangent? Of course, this is a very simple case where it seems like you know it's misleading that the two topmost points are so, but then you can think about a situation like this and a situation like this, and you know, this is this could be the. Right. So somehow you should be able to again use the ordering and do this entire thing in. Compute the, uh, the common tangent, or both common tangents actually. Common tangent. Hmm. These are the number of vertices we are going to visit. Okay. 
So, the vertices should be stored in a way which is a kind of a balanced search structure or it do not so well I mean right now no because we are not talking about dynamic situations we are only talking about static situations even if they are in an array that is good enough for us. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, then what do we have? So, if we if we manage to find the common tangent in order log n time okay, we are doing pretty good that is I can write my recurrence as t's of n equals 2 of t's of n over 2 for the 2 halves okay, plus what? The time to find well there is one for merging and one for splitting see the, this merging works because they are linearly separable. Okay, so, I must have found some kind of a median line right. right? So, this is for uh, median division let us say plus order log n for common tangent, but then this whole thing together is only order n. Okay. So, this gives you immediately No, very simple. I take that points, project on the x axis, find a median line that is really separable. I am doing the vertical projection, it is very easy. I mean, whichever you choose any direction that you want, you project the points and choose the median line. That is the first thing that we, we did you know even for the case of uh, you know our uh, maximal algorithm right. Okay, so, this is the situation where the two point sets are linearly separable where I have actually spent time to find the median. Okay. The other this is by the way not uh, not merge sort, merge sort does not find the median, merge sort just finds a partition. Okay. So, like we started out here it just partitions the given set S into two almost equal halves it may not they may not be necessarily linearly separable. Okay. So, let us consider the other case where they are not lin linearly separable. Okay. Now, if they are not linearly separable and I construct the two convex hulls, okay, well it they could be tangled right, you know they can be badly tangled. This is one okay, and this may be the other. These are my two convex halves of the two halves, not two halves, but not necessarily separable. Then how are you going to merge them? This would be the real merge sort thing. The one that we did was a little bit of a cheating because in quick sort or whatever, you don't actually find the median. You actually uh, so you don't find the median, and neither in merge sort do you actually find the median. Right? The median is never found. In quick sort also you don't find the median. In merge sort also you don't find the median. Right? So that was a little different from both quick sort and merge sort. So, how are you going to now combine these these two you know these two figures which can be you know tangled. <coughs> well, um, first of all is it about finding tangents? You don't know how many. Exactly you do not even know how many. So, that was a nice structure right just upper tangent lower tangent you are done. Here you know if you look at the overall thing you know it could be you know much more part of this and they are completely intertwined you know. So, I do not know it looks like some strange thing you know. So, two convex polygons in how many places can they intersect? In many places right you know let us say n n over 2 something like that it is a large number of intersections. So, we are not going to find I mean finding all those n tangents you know is, is not what we want and also it is not clear because they are not, not separable you know how do you even find the tangents something else we need to do something else. Here we have not spent the time to separate the points sets. Okay, so we must pay the price at some point. So we must pay the price when you are actually trying to combine them. So here is a hint, and this is again a homework problem for you. Uh, 
uh, you are talking about finding least x and uh, largest x and splitting recursively. So, I am not going to try to even elaborate on that. Um, you have hit upon a couple of right keywords, but uh, you know this has to be worked out in a slightly different manner and the only hint that I will get, give you. So, this is exercise, homework exercise, use gram scan somehow. to merge in order in time. I will not say anything more and if you have understood, keep it to yourself, just let the others work it out. Hmm? Remember that Graham scan works on sorted sets. Okay. So, I think I have given you more than enough hints. Okay, let us proceed to other variations, okay, other variations of uh, sorting algorithms. So, we have we have looked at now quick hull, we have looked at merge hull. Okay. How about uh, insertion sort? Okay. So, I will say insertion hull. So, insertion sort works in the following way that you inductively increase the size of the sorted set, right. You are given a set of n elements, okay. starting from the of course, a singleton element is already sorted, then you consider the second element, okay. you, know, you can always compare exchange you know, and, and get the sorted set of size 2 and after you have sorted a set of the first i element, the first i elements are in sorted order, you look at the i plus, plus first element okay, and insert it in the right place and that is basically going to increase the size of the sorted set by 1 and that is how insertion sort works till you have handled all the n elements. Okay. So, in the context of convex hulls, what we are going to do, I mean we can start with any 3 points because any 3 points will define a triangle. Okay. Let us say they are nice points, they are not like coincident on each other. So, start with any 3 points. that define a triangle okay. and then insert the next point until we have uh, exhausted. Okay. And what do you do? Uh, if the next point falls within the, uh, let us call the structure C sub i, let us say the convex hull of first i points, then what do you do? Nothing. Nothing, right? Nothing. And uh, okay, nothing should be empty. Okay. Else, right. So now you know how why we found the tangents. Okay, there has to be some application or something, right? Everything is useful in life, somewhere, sometime. Okay. Else. Um, okay, so, since someone said already to find construct C sub i plus 1, which is a convex hull of the i plus 1 points by finding the two tangents. So, how much time will this take? There are some details that I have left out here. Yes, I mean if you look at this 
you know the construct the by finding the two tangents we know how to find the two tangents in log n the in log n time but then there are some other details of later how do you know whether whether the point falls within the convex hull or not we need to also maintain some other kind of data data structures we have to first find out if this point is within the hull or not right so how do you find out if a point is within the hull or not maintain quickly x maintain x axis and y axis uh let me spend a little bit of time on this problem so here is a convex hull a convex polygon okay okay i give you a point the point could be here the point could be here the point could be here wherever how do i find out and if you want to want to execute this or you know um, uh, you want to limit this algorithm to n log n i better do this thing within log n time given a point okay given an arbitrary point is it inside outside one thing you are certainly allowed to do is uh, build a data structure if i just give you this convex polygon it's not clear whether you can do it so you are allowed to build some kind of data structure and something that you have to keep updating because you see what's happening you find out you suppose i had some kind of data structure to do this okay in the context of this convex hull algorithm this is a one shot thing okay here is a convex hull okay here is a point somehow you build a data structure such that given an arbitrary point i should be able to see whether it's case 1 or case 2 whether it's inside or outside because it's outside i have to find this tangents if it's inside you know i forget about it right but not only when it is outside i have to find the tangents i have to also make sure next time when a point comes you know this convex hull now looks like this okay it's not the original convex hull this has disappeared right so i have to keep this data structure updated also so i can uh, find out the centroid of this set of endpoints why is the centroid important no, what is the centroid first of all i think i don't think we have defined the centroid the centroid is like you uh, to have uh, like the initial coordinate this x1 plus x2 plus x3 and y1 plus x3 okay so it's a weighted uh, weighted average of the x and the y coordinate but do you really require the centroid or any point within the convex hull any point within the right. hull but i saw because that is one point that is guaranteed to be there no, but you yeah. take any three points yeah, any three point and the centroid or whatever any with that will, will be within the convex hull join that and see whether that segment intersects with the but again we have to find out whether that segment intersects right so here is another problem so there's a point problem since we are talking about segments uh, i'll generalize the problem this is another problem here's a convex polygon okay here is a line okay does the line intersect these are you know somewhat relative uh, related and interesting problems fundamental problems okay which you may have used for when designing other kinds of algorithms now the line may not intersect okay the line could be like this okay the line is like this that doesn't intersect then i want to know which is the closest corner to the line okay so in this particular case maybe i'm not sure it looks a tie but uh, let us say it is this point or something so all these problems you know have are somewhat related i mean the solution they are somewhat related and they basically exploit one structure so can you guess so let's first tackle this problem the point inside or outside the convex hull uh, uh, x min uh, uh, so if it is within x min y min x max y max all you are saying you know that that's completely misleading so you know what you are saying is that it is inside the triangle that means it is inside the polygon no this point is you know not inside the convex polygon we just talking about an enclosing box
See, convex hulls are ordered, so use the ordering information somehow. The ordering is, is the key to you know, solving problems quickly on uh, two-dimensional convex hulls. Sir, if it's inside, then it will go around in the you are not going to walk around the entire boundary, right? Yeah. Uh, if it's outside, there will be this maximum, then I mean, it will change the direction. And if it's inside, it will be only in one direction. Uh, there is something to it. There is something to it. Um, Uh, that is also not clear. See, if it is outside, you know, it, it again depends. So this point is inside. Okay, what you're saying is that again. So if I don't know whether it's inside or outside, you know, the the distance from this this point to these corner points will increase and decrease. Okay, whereas the point outside also the same thing is going to happen. If I take two consecutive points on the convex hull, I mean you take two cons consecutive points on the convex hull. The convex hull and the third one, then they take the consider B. So if it is a left turn, then uh, it will be inside the. If you walk around, mm. okay. So again, let me give you one hint. I think now you, I think you should be able to see it. You know, so to consider any point inside the convex hull. Okay. It could be centroid, may not be centroid, something, any point inside the convex hull and look at these radials. Okay. So uh, can you, you know, given any point like this or this, can you find out which radial it falls in? Which sector of which radial? So this point and both these points are within this yes. radial. No. So, so what is what is what is uh, so if the point is in this sector, can you find this quickly? This particular sector. Join this point to the. Well, here is no. So, question is that for any other pair of radials, the point is to, you know, so we have to define your notion of orientation, but you know, both of them are in one direction, right? Here, one is one direction, the other is one, one direction. So, this this should let you do something. Can you do a binary search to find out? So, I mean, that point the direction changes. So, I mean, if you walk for for all the possible uh, this radius, uh, okay. so you have to figure out the, the point where. So, so for any the any the other, radius. yeah, for any other thing, they'll both be. So now you have to do it not with angles, but with respect to left turns and right turns. Okay. No, so this is this and this is this. And the other sector will also satisfy the one on the left. Particularly on the left. Or it will make uh, <coughs> perpendicular. So vertically opposite. Uh, no, no, what is vertically opposite? There is no vertical. Th these are all separate these things. Okay, so is there some some way that you can distinguish between these these situations? Can you distinguish between these two situations?
So, what is what is special about this particular sector as opposed to any other sector? So, you take any two consecutive things, they have to be on the same orientation, but these are on the different orientation. That is true for every other every other sector. So, what is you know, yeah, let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, how can it be? Because they are both on in this direction or both on this direction. They are not this direction and this direction. No, so what is your left turn, right turn here? So let's see. Just one minute. Let me draw another figure. So, suppose my point is here, let me number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So, the claim is that this is the only sector where you have the two points, uh, the sorry, the two uh, lines on the two directions. Anything else, both the points are on either they are on no so you have to somehow break the orientation you know? so so circular things can be broken up into two parts so where are you using the left turn and right turn it depends on that which so the center no why should you join it to the center Well, um, can we do something like a below and above test? Below and above test. Below, so you know this. Uh, these are lines. Okay. So, look at a line and look at, you know, the below this line and above this line. So, there is no way that you can break the symmetry? So, what I do not understand is these are all separate things, these are do not think these are extensions, you know this is one sector, okay. this is another sector, this is another sector. So, what is, I mean, these are cones basically, so why is it, I mean this, and these cones are you know ordered in some way, so why cannot you find out which cone contains this point? No, no, so I am asking you find out how to do it. Okay, so what will work? Something has to work. No, we are never going to compute the uh, the exact angle. See, all you are saying is that you know here is a cone. Can I find out if the point is here or here? Is this your only problem? Here is a cone. Okay. Can I distinguish that a point is here vis-a-vis -a, -vis a point is here? 
So then why can't we use the same test there? As all you are talking about, you know, here is, here is an uh, obtuse angle and here is an acute angle. But you know, we are certainly not going to find out the acute or the obtuse angle to find out if the point is outside the cone or inside the cone. The cone is the intersection of basically what, you know, it is it's this. Uh, If you can't find out if the point is inside the cone or not, you can't even find out if it is inside a triangle, <laughs> right. So, that is a test that. Okay, I think I will I'll, I'll not you know, you know spend any more class time right now. So, I think I will let you think about it and you know if you do not have an answer tomorrow, we will discuss it again, okay. So, once you have uh, the, the, the point, you know which cone it is in. All you need to do is find out which side of this uh, line it is in, whether it is inside or outside, right. Okay. So, uh, my claim is that because this is ordered, the whole thing can be done in order log n time, okay. And similarly, I will bring you back to this problem also, the problem of finding the distance from a line, the distance from a line also has some kind of a you know character where it is increasing up to a certain point okay and then it decreases and then you should be able to again use this ordering of increasing and decreasing to find out where which is the closest point to the line hmm. so it will not be a unimodal sequence so it will be like the distance will be see the distance is going to increase for a while increase for a while okay and then so, it will be like you know if you plot the distance from the point okay is going to increase okay and then decrease right and somewhere you know you, know, you, you should be able to basically find which is the and this, this is actually a circular it is a circular shift. So, you should be able to find out which is the closest point again by using the property of that the distance is increasing up to a certain point and then it will decrease. So, you have to find out where it switches the furthest point and the closest point both can be found okay so convex hulls have these very nice properties okay the two dimensional convex hull three dimensional there is nothing that we can not much that we can do so now so this thing we we and all we need to do is maintain an ordered sequence okay so maintain the ordered sequence to maintain an ordered sequence we can use a binary search tree because now the sequence could be changing because a new point could be inserted and some of the old points will disappear yeah so then we can do this implies all operations can be done and what are the all the operations okay deletion of points because of addition and to find the tangents So, all these can be both of these can be done in order log n time per point. So, when you add a new point, okay, it can actually lead to deletion of whole lot of points, not just one point. So, a single insertion could be expensive, but then you are charging log n time to each point, and therefore, overall, this algorithm will take order n log n time. And here is a another uh, kind of uh, teaser that I claim that uh, um, the the deletion, okay. 
So, the finding the tangents, if to find the tangents, I need not do a binary search. I can get away without doing a binary search. I can actually do a linear walk. Okay. So, that you figure out why we can just do a linear walk. I can just from the point. Okay. Uh, so, here is what I mean. So, let me. So, what the structure that I am going to maintain is the following. Here is my P's of i. Okay. What I am going to do is maintain for each point okay, where it intersects uh, the convex hull. Okay. This is information that I am going to maintain for all points. Okay. And if I do that, Uh, P1, P2, P3, wherever in, I maintain this inter information, which means that I have already in this process, I do not have to maintain the points inside the convex hull. I will maintain this inductively. Okay. So, for all points not inserted, maintain, let us say I am calling it P1 prime, okay. <coughs> the intersection with convex hull. Okay. And once I know that I am going to insert this, I am going to simply just walk like this and walk like this till I find the two tangents. I am not going to do any kind of binary search. And I claim that we can again get an n log n algorithm. This is something for you to think about. Okay, so which means that I do not need to maintain all those con, uh, you know, uh, complicated data structure. I can do away with most of that. Right, at that point. So, now when it changes, when this changes, then I have to again, you know, renew, I have to find out this these two points. You know whether it has uh, for for this point. So suppose there was another point here. Okay, now this was earlier intersecting this edge, but now this edge has disappeared. Okay, so there is this new edge that has come in. Okay, so we'll have to now update that to this point. Yeah, but for other points also you may have to update. Right? Yes, for many points we have to update. Yeah, so you have to do all that calculation and eventually show that it is again n log n. <laughs> no, it is. It's not obvious, but you know if you have to do some little bit of amortized analysis to be convinced about that, okay. because there are only two new edges that are being inserted. So I'll stop here today, and. Uh, Tomorrow, I will continue with a very related problem and also introduce a technique called duality.